but you're not a man you're less than a man take your money sweetheart have a good night princess Revolution Gang. By the way, I think it's time for us to get a new name outside of Revolution Gang because Revolution is a very long word and it's a very long thing to say but I just feel like Revolution really stands for everything that I stand for. I feel like life should be revolutionary and you should be revolutionary. Anyway, nevertheless, it's one thing to be revolutionary, it's another thing to be cute. So I feel like we need a new name and I've kind of been gravitating towards besties but I want to know how some of the male audience feel about besties right because I cater to both female and men although my audience is primarily women but um I want to know what do you guys think about besties because I call you guys besties on Instagram I call you guys besties on TikTok and yes I make TikToks now please follow me at I'm gonna put my ads here but please follow me on TikTok because there's gonna be content on there that you don't see on here follow me on Instagram because on Instagram there's always there's like everyday daily content that I post on there that you won't see anywhere else because I engage more frequently on there and of course if you haven't subscribed yet, then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution because here too there's content that you will not see on any other platform. So pretty much anywhere that you follow me, you will be getting content that is different. It won't be the same content spread everywhere. So make sure that you follow me. Let's stay connected guys, please. Let's do this thing together. So you guys know I haven't posted in a while. So I'm a bit out of practice. I'm a bit nervous. I'm a bit scared. So I need you guys to really show up with the comments the liking the sharing because believe it or not that really does actually motivate me to post more i told you guys before money is not my motivator because i don't really make that much money from social media so money is not my motivation but literally like engaging with you guys speaking to you learning from you and just i don't know connecting is my motivation factor so the more i hear from you the more i see you commenting and sharing is the more i know that there's room for me on these platforms and that there is something that i'm posting that you guys actually want to see anyway so that aside let's move into the topic of today's video so first of all first of all okay i want you guys to tell me in fact i want you to comment down below and tell me the day i posted on instagram or anywhere and promise you guys a man no because the pressure is getting Wessa. Every day, every day, every day, someone is in my comments, in my DMs, telling me, Benita, we're waiting for you to get a man. Where's your man? We're waiting for couple content. We're looking for it. Anyway, guys, so today's video is going to be about dating, or you know, the lack thereof. I'm gonna be sharing some of my Tinder dating horror stories so i'm gonna start this video off with confirming that yes i am single i am not currently in a relationship uh, the reason why i'm single um is because first of all i'm a daughter apelli like guys the men they're finished guys the men are online debating about things like who pays for dates hey! are you not embarrassed this is really embarrassing okay but realistically um I was in a relationship previously that rocked me. You guys. But I heard that. <laughs> they will hurt you. Basically, the last relationship I was in, it really messed up with my esteem. And more than anything, it messed with my voice. What I mean by that is, I bet you guys can tell that I'm very vocal and I know how to speak up for myself. I don't know if you can tell, but like, yeah. The situation in that previous relationship. I was kind of gaslit to hell and back boy where I started questioning the validity of my feelings and the validity of my voice um, and I found myself apologizing for things that I shouldn't be apologizing for and thinking that I was unreasonable with requests that I very much wasn't unreasonable for having you know I would be ignored and gaslit so much that I could no longer defend myself so whenever conflict came my way I'm not afraid of conflict I'm not afraid of confrontation I believe in communication but it was so bad that whenever conflict came my way, I would immediately become silent. I would just withdraw. Whether I agree or not, I would withdraw. I would just keep quiet. And this is how I became for like a, a really a, a long time, a couple of, not a couple, because a couple is two, a few months, you know? 
and so I purposefully didn't want to get a, get back into a relationship until I was able to find my voice again because I can't enter into a relationship when I don't know my voice when I can't speak up for myself and when my sense of worth has been you know compromised so one of my biggest things is whenever you enter into a relationship or are in a relationship and i'm speaking as a heterosexual woman who engages in heterosexual relationships so i'm a woman i date men um straight men i personally feel like when you are dating men or are in the dating pool it's so important for you to know your worth because one thing about these gents my boy they will punch above their weight and they will know they're punching above their weight and you are the clown if you let them punch above their weight not all men none of what i say here will be true for all men or all people but i'm not going to spend this whole video clarifying that so let's start with this disclaimer any statement i make will is not indicative of the behavior of all men of all women it's not an umbrella thing it's my perspective it's my opinion it's my experience if you have an opposing experience and an opposing opinion comment down below and let's talk about it because every single opinion is welcome here okay mine is not universal yours is not universal so, so let's come together and talk anyway that's the disclaimer so anyway uh, some men will come to you and you were here they're here they they get you now suddenly they think it's here but also they will try to diminish you so that they will so that you can feel a lower sense of worth and thus put them up there and you down here and they will try and do that through verbal abuse through maybe physical abuse even um, messing with your self-esteem etc etc however they will do it so that being said as a woman you need to be aware of your worth so that no man can assign worth to you because if you allow a man to assign worth to you and again not all men some men will assign a worth way lower than what you deserve because that works in their benefit right so for me it's important to know your worth etc so i'm single also because i took time to really get back to myself pull myself towards myself um so that no man can come and tell me that i'm something that i'm not and that's on period Speaking of a man will try to diminish you, now let's get into dating horror stories, Tinder dating horror stories. Let me tell you besties, let me tell you guys about the worst dates I've ever been on in my damn life. I got a Tinder profile and I was in Houston at the time. I matched with some guy, he was cute, you know, he had a bald head. Honestly, I don't know why you guys have beef with bald headed gents because personally, I love them. I don't know if it's in my place to say this, but I think a bald hair is attractive. That's what I'm here for. I think hair is attractive. Honestly, I don't have any wahala against any hairstyle a man can get to. You. <laughs> as long as you look good, bro. Whether you're bald, you have a fade, you have logs. Oh, me personally, I love it. Hey. So for some context, when I went on this date, I was living in Houston. I was an intern at the time at an accounting firm and um, I was interning for a couple of months. So I went on a date at a spot that was local to me. So I go on this date and I'm looking like a bad B boy. I'm looking. Finger licking good special. That's what I'm talking about. So I went on this date and I meet this man. First of all, did he not walk in there wearing John Cena pants? <laughs> he was way shorter than what he represented himself online. But you know what? It's okay. It's okay, John Cena pants, when you start dating the man, you can fix it. Um, uh, way shorter than what he represented, he was still taller than me regardless. So it's like way shorter, but like, whatever. You know, you're still, you're still tall enough. Initially, when we were talking, I had asked this man, why did you move to Houston? Because he was living in LA, Los Angeles, and he moved to Houston. So I was like, why did you move to Houston? And he's, he was like, I'll tell you on the date. That's suspicious. That's weird. We got on the date. And then we get to the point where I'm like, okay, but why did you move to Houston? And this man tells me that he moved to Houston so he could be closer to his son. What did he say? <laughs> it's from, it went from worse to worse, sir. This man had a whole baby and failed to mention it. And I guess this is a question, comment down below, how soon you guys think someone should mention the fact that they have a child? Because for me personally, the moment we start talking, like, um, let's say if we speak for over a day, over a day, you need to mention the fact that you have a child. Mention the fact that you have a child. Mention the fact that you're married because you're not welcome if you're married. Um, if you've been married, 
all of these things are things that for me you need to mention literally within the first week of talking because I think you know very well that these may be make or break points and if you're hiding them you're hiding them for a reason but for me right now I'm not looking for a man with a child because a man with a child has responsibilities that I'm not ready to tap into that I'm not ready to be a part of a man with a child his child must be number one and I'm not gonna be number one his finances have to be split with his child obviously and I don't want that I want a man who's you know spare money can be spent on me you know um, and a man who's flexible and everything and I would never be with a man who's a deadbeat so I wouldn't be comfortable being with a man who has a child but doesn't take care of the child because if you're gonna do that to her you can do it to me so I'm not gonna be accepting of that you know so now we're making conversation and I come to find out that no man this man hates women he, 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 he does not like women like he's one of those men who maybe is sexually attracted to women but doesn't like women and how did I know that so throughout the entire date I realized that he's a Kevin Samuels bro that he's an Andrew Tate bro and hear me out guys now I'm gonna be generalizing if a man is a huge fan a big big fan of Kevin Samuels of Andrew Tate he's a red flag walk away this man right spends the day talking about yeah you know because basically talks about how you know how these women are because some of these women are broke you know some of these women don't have jobs they want to use you for dates you know because some of these hoes he's spending the whole day just talking about how much women ain't ish and how you can't trust them and how basically he's he's a high value man oh because see i'm yo the moment you hear high value man <laughs> Essentially, he was saying that a man, by virtue of simply being a man, is better than a woman because he can, men can have children later. And he was like, men make all the dating decisions and there's more men in the world than women. Yadi, a whole lot of misogynistic BS, by the way. Now, mind you, then he's talking about the fact that, yeah, you know, like he's talking about how him, for where he is right now, he's a commodity, he's a hotshot because he's got a job, he's got, um, he's getting an education and basically he could get any woman he wanted or whatever so on this date i tried to to, to to you know change the topic and not insist on speaking about how much he hates other women and let's talk about it if you meet a man who down talks other women or a specific class of women and you don't fall into it don't feel happy because he tried to do that to me he was like yeah but i know you're different from these women i know you're this but you're not like that and I'm not, I was not amused by the fact that, oh my God, <laughs> he thinks I'm different, he thinks I'm pretty. No, because that man can turn around and use that against you. A misogynist is a misogynist and it's only a matter of time before it you know, impacts your life. Let me tell you what he said. He asked me what is my goal in life and what kind of man I'm looking for. So I told him, I was like, you know, my ultimate goal in life is to be a philanthropist, which is to help people, you know, and that's my ultimate goal. I believe we're here for others and to help other people and that's my ultimate goal. And then he said something along the lines of, yeah, you know, a woman like you um, who has your career and your education is the kind of woman who wants a high value man. But you need to ask yourself, why would a high value man want you? Because he has access to a lot of women. Basically, he was trying to tell me. He was trying to type humble me in this whole date. And I, listen to me, I will never date a man who tries to humble me. Never in this life. I will only be with a man who feels the need to elevate me, okay? I I'm going on a rant here but I hate men who try to compete with women unjustly as in men who you know that when you stand amongst other men you're not a man amongst men you can't stand with the big boys and stand when you are around other men you're the ice boy if you want to fight go and fight with other men okay, go and be a man amongst other men it's sort of like playing you know games with your siblings and beating them and you think i'm the man because you beat your 12 year old brother as a 23 year old man go and play with other 23 year olds and see if you're gonna win you know what i mean anyway i digress so um this man basically is like why would a high value man want me he's trying to tell me outside of him why would a high value man want me that's what he's trying to tell me let's look at the facts okay you have a child I don't have a child. I don't know honestly what he did or whatever, but this man decided to mention to me how much he makes in a year. And when I tell you what he was earning as a man working in his full-time job, I as an intern earned more than him. As an intern. As an intern. 
I earned more than him, okay? So here's this high value man who's trying to diminish my worth. He's got a kid, I don't have a kid, okay? And he earns, he earns less than me and he's deep in his career. I earn more than him and I'm an intern. Now mind you, I wanna take this time to clarify again. I don't view people as you are as good as how much you earn. The reason why I did or am doing this analysis is because he was trying to diminish me and that's how he was thinking. So I'm like, okay, if you're gonna think like that, let's level, let's look at the facts, okay? Oh, and another thing as well, he had been to juvie. Uh -uh. Hey. Another fact that he didn't mention until we were on our date, he had been to juvenile detention. Like he, the kid people jail. Jail for kids. Okay, so you have some kind of a criminal record. You are a father. You earn less than me. Oh, but somehow you're the high value man and I'm the one that why would high value men want me? And now this part is a little petty because it's not quite about him, but his mama was a crackhead. Wait, 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 the man who has a crackhead mama, he's been to juvenile detention, he's got a kid, he earns less than me. This is the man who's saying he's a high value man. Do you know what I'm saying when I say he's the kind of man where by virtue of him being a man, he feels like I'm, automatic, I'm automatically better than women. Spends the whole day trying to diminish my value. And I don't think it's because he didn't see my value. I think he saw my, va my value very clearly. And I think he tried to diminish my sense of worth in order for him to be elevated and to trick me into thinking that I'm the lucky one for having this little light skin savior. Oh my God, wow. Anyway, okay, cool. So this whole date is flopping awkward. Like it's really, really awkward. But wait! So we get to the end of the day and we're talking and this man is like, I had a really good time. I want to see you again. Um, and then he's like, uh, tomorrow. It's Sunday. We had this date on Sunday. And then he's like, tomorrow after work, I want you to come by to my house. I want you to cook for me. Hey! I don't know him or I don't know him from above. So he's telling me he wants me to come to his house the next day and he's like yeah like i want you to cook for me you know i know you're african so i want you to cook for me let me taste some african food oh cannot trick me you cannot trick me oh oh he says oh oh you can bring food baby are you hungry what's 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 going on which one is that one now he's telling me that he will either pick me up or he will drop me off. As in, you only have one ride. Pick which one you want. Pick if you want me to pick you up or to drop you off. Okay, so, okay, let's walk through it again one more time. I must get done from my nine to over five job because it's accounting. I must shower, I must go home, I must cook or cook the night before, I don't even know. And then put myself in an Uber with the food I cooked or stop by, go and buy food, carry myself to his house, present the food, present myself, give him food, give him sex, and then he'll drop me off at home. What kind of shit is that? What is wrong with you? I, 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 are you normal? Are you normal? We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Guys, I wanted to give a bit more context about this part, okay? So this man, when he was telling me that he wanted us to have sex the next day, was talking about how, of course, he has to test drive what he's getting into because he can't get into a relationship without test driving first and seeing what it feels like. Like, it was, he didn't even mention the sex in like a normal human way. It was very derogatory. He was like, tell me what your body count is right now. And he was talking about how if a woman has had sex she has no value but of course a man can sleep with as many people as he wants and his value will never be diminished like this is how the sex conversation was going and how he was introducing it i met you today i don't know you i must hey maybe it said Popeye here maybe it's an idiot over here guys anyway so 
I didn't even entertain that conversation at all at all. So I told him, I was like, listen, it's been fun, it's been real, but I will not be seeing you again. I don't think that we align in what we're looking for or whatever. And then he got so flipping upset, guys. He was like, I drove, cause Houston is big guys. You can all live in Houston and be in a long distance relationship. So he's like, I drove, come and meet you tonight. And what like, this is my gas, you didn't pay for gas or whatever. Are you gonna send me my gas money back? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know what? I sat there, I had his number. I Venmoed him for the drink that I had and I only had one drink. And then I Venmoed him a little bit extra as well. I said, clearly you need it. Have a good night. The one thing I the one thing I will never have from anyone is have anyone thinking that I owe them. First of all, because first of all, if you go on a date, you're not doing it for me. You came to meet me on a date because you wanted to meet me. You were interested in me. You wanted to get to know me. The same way I availed myself and I also carried myself or transported myself to wherever because I wanted to meet you. You know, so don't you will never guilt me into being grateful that you came to meet me you did what you wanted to do for your own sake but i sent the money back not because i felt that i owed him but i was like first of all you're a let me not even use my language on here but you're not a man you're less than a man take your money sweetheart have a good night princess oh my gosh guys i wanted to get into so much more in this video but it's way too long so i'm gonna cut it here i'm gonna make another video and i want you guys i'm actually gonna have you guys comment in this video and maybe i'll post a poll and i'll probably post a, a thing on instagram so you can ask me like what are your specific questions you have for me as it relates to dating relationships um so I think I'll make a video like that. I'll also explain a bit more about the kind of man I'm looking for. I'll tell you guys about the time I almost got poisoned. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, stay away from boys, okay? That's the moral of the story, stay away from boys. But, and that's it for today guys i hope you like this video don't forget to comment like share and subscribe and i will be back with more videos any videos you want to see comment down below and i will see you guys in the next video peace and love guys bye